Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Fish of Hex. My name is Travis. Well, we're going to do a little bit of calcium reactor maintenance today. I already started it. Um, I really wasn't going to create a video, but I figured it'd be a good topic to talk about for those of you who have calcium reactors and really talk about the maintenance that's required for them. Now, uh, it's going to be a pretty short video, but I want to show you guys what's going on. So, as you can see, the calcium reactor is removed from its little nook there. The secondary chamber is put to the side, and uh, it's pretty dirty. Basically, over the last uh, few days, it's been slowly slowing down, and that's because the media has broken down so much. I'll show you guys a little bit of it. It's like these little, really fine, fine particles. And what happens is it actually uh, kind of compacts here in the chamber, and uh, then it starts to float to the surface, and there's like a huge gap, kind of like when you have, um, what is it, carbon reactor media and it gets clogged up. You get that little gap because it starts floating to the surface. That's exactly what happened in here. And uh, the flow went from three gallons per hour to about 1.5. And I'll show you guys that here in the graph. One of the main reasons why I have an FMM flow meter on my calcium reactor output is to see any of these drops. So it's been doing pretty good for a while. And then it started slowly going down. And I actually increased the flow for the, for the DC pump. And it still slowly uh, started going down. It got down to uh, about 2 to 1.52 for a little while there. I woke up this morning and I was like, yep, got to fix that today. So... Um, yeah, because everything going on with the uh, tank and all the stuff that was removed, all the colonies, all the growing and stuff that's going on, last thing I need is my calcium reactor not to work properly. So, yeah, I already went ahead and scooped out all the media. I had to take it all out before I can even remove the uh, calcium reactor because this pipe right here that I added for the other tanks doesn't allow me to pull it out completely. So I had to empty it and then kind of twist it and move it. So in uh, this video, I'm going to I'm just going to rinse this out, out back, clean it out really good. I'm going to take the pump off real quick and uh, just kind of see how dirty it is. Make sure that's clean. Might as well because, uh, you know, we already have it out of the uh, section there. But as for media, you guys know that I have uh, a little bit of Reborn left. We have uh, just a little bit of that left there. And I moved over to the core. So I'm going to add the rest of this in there. It should be enough to fill up the rest of the chamber. If not, I'll order some more. Not really a big deal. I just want to make sure the flow is good and uh, I can always adjust the uh, pH and the flow even more if I need to, if for whatever reason there's not enough media while I order some more. But uh, yeah, this project or this task wasn't really planned. That's why I didn't have a video ready for it. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna start taking this apart and rinsing it out. All right, so this is my very first time ever doing maintenance on this calcium reactor and it's been running consistently without any issues for the exception of the uh, clogging uh, gate valve, which is actually on the uh, secondary chamber. We opened this all the way up and added the DC pump, if you guys remember that. That was the only issue with it is that it clogged, but that's pretty common for gate valves. Anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and take this pump off. I'm going to leave it plugged in because the cord is, uh, God knows where it is. It's, it's back there, it's somewhere over here, who knows. But we're gonna see how the pump is. Pretty simple, actually. Uh, I'm just gonna take this whole section off. It's gonna be a little bit of water, but hey, it's a fish room, might as well. Um, just make sure everything is good, not clogged up. There's no leaks or anything that I've had with it. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna look at that here in a second. So we're gonna go ahead and take this out back real quick and just rinse it out, just make it look nasty, or look nasty, look good. You can see at the bottom, I don't know if you can, oh, I'm dumping water out. Um, there's just some massive particles. Like this whole section right here is completely full. And uh, that's definitely an issue, especially for the pump, because uh, also another thing I noticed is this pump started whining uh, probably two or three weeks ago, it was, it's, you, see, you know when a pump turns on and it, it's on, but it's not spinning, you hear that wee. that's exactly what that was doing, and then I turn off the pump, turn it back on, and then it starts flowing again. So I knew that these particles were getting into the pump, and uh, that's why I just want to make sure it's good to go. So let me go ahead and rinse this out real quick, and uh, we'll be right back. All right, well, I'm back. Uh, that was a lot easier to clean than I thought it would be. Actually, I went ahead and just filled it up, rinsed it out, but then there was a whole bunch of stuff, like I said, that was stuck down here, and, uh, you know, this thing just pops on out, and it was pretty easy to clean. There's, of course, a little bit in there. You're not going to get it all, um, and I'm definitely not going to spend all day messing with it, but, uh, yeah, that was extremely easy. I was surprised. It might just be because it's super early in the morning, and... Uh, I was up really late working on the printer, so I might just be uh, amused by simple things, so that's fine by me. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get this pump up, or open, and see how bad it is. It shouldn't be too bad. I mean, these pumps are really good. Let's see here. really know by looking at the impeller. Oh, that's still good. That's extremely clean still. The particles must have just got stuck in here and made it a little bit hard to spin, but yeah, this is still in really good shape. It's not really, there's no slime. 
you can see that some of the uh, particles got here on the. Uh, let me see if you can. You're probably not going to see it. Let's see if I can zoom in. You see how it's scratched? So some of the particles got in on the pump, the uh, piece there, or the impeller, and scratched it. That's what that was. Um, I don't know if it's going to really affect performance, but overall it's not really that bad. I've seen much worse. Surprised that it's kind of got this plastic coating being a CJ, but that might be just their uh, secret to having them run so well. Who knows? But anyway, uh, I'm going to put this back in. It's pretty clean. Um, we should have we should have alleviate most of the issues just by cleaning the reactor out. And I just dropped a little nozzle piece. Oh, to be continued. Of course I did. Well, let me find that real quick. Oh, found it. All right, oh, that didn't take very long. Okay. All right, put that back in there. Yeah, it's still pretty clean. I finally got the uh, the cover on there. It just took me a minute. For some reason, I just couldn't get the right angle, so uh, I just had to slide this slide this around a little bit and get my hand in there. But yeah, so that's good to go. Easy to fix. Put the cover back on. Very very surprised at how well these pumps hold up, just because it runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, and you know just recently it started having issues, and that was just because of the uh, the pieces getting in there really. But this is really reliable. Um, Ciche makes a great pump. Uh, anyway, so uh, we're going to put this thing back together and start uh, filling it up. It's pretty easy. Just slides back in. Tighten these bad boys down. All right. Put our pump piece back on. That's another thing about Geo's. Uh, equipment and the reactors and stuff that come with these unions that just make life so much easier. They come out, especially on the, let me show you guys here, the uh, reactors. I mean, it's just, it's super nice to have these. It takes almost no time to change the reactor out. And uh, it's pretty good. Let me jack the camera up here. Enjoy that ride. But uh, yeah, really love the unions. This will not be my last calcium reactor, especially the new build it's going to have. I don't know. It's, it's going to be ridiculous, but it's, it's definitely going to be custom made. It'll be nice. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and add our last piece, uh, which goes down here. I remember I plugged that back in. So. All right, so this has the built-in drain if you could use You could use that. Ideally, that's what I would have used, but because it was back there and no room to move around, it didn't really work out. Double check the, the uh, unions. Make sure everything's good. Because the last thing I want to do is fill it up and have it leaking back there, especially with my giant mess of cords. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the uh, new media. Or actually, better yet, let me add the old media. I'm going to clean it first, add that, and then I can see how much I really have to use to top off. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I ran into a little bit of an issue with this media. I wanted to see uh, how much of it I could actually get back into the uh, main chamber here, but the problem is, as I mentioned, there's so many small pieces that are eventually just gonna break down, become mush, and clog it up soon. So I wanna save as much of this as I can, so I kind of, I don't know, I guess I can, I can say I rigged it, but what I'm gonna do is throw some media in this basket, which is one of my shipping organizing baskets. And you can see the holes are decent. I mean, they're going to let some particles through, and that's the point. It's going to save all this big stuff, hopefully. So I'm just going to shake it, let the little stuff go through, as you can see, falling out. Um, you can see all this the bigger stuff is staying, and that's what I want to keep. So this process is going to take a little bit, so I'm going <laughs> to throw some music on. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm all set with that, just filling up the five gallon bucket with some RO water before I throw the new media in there just to rinse it out. Now one thing I did notice during this process, some of the stuff got down into this uh, 
inlet pipe, so definitely going to get the shop back out before we finish this up and clean everything, make sure we get those pieces out so they don't go into the pump. That's kind of what we're trying to avoid altogether. And uh, yeah, so I didn't really get much media left. Um, honestly, with it flowing to the surface and how compact it was, it, uh, I didn't really think I was going to have much left anyways. But uh, yeah, so that method wasn't good so much as in clean, but it wouldn't be a fish room project if I didn't destroy it in the process. So let me go ahead and dump in this new media. So the uh, rest of our new one. And I got a strong suspicion that I'm probably going to use all of this. If not, I will uh, put the rest back in the container. So we've got some floaties. What is this? Uh, a piece of wood. Mix it up a little bit. That's good. Let me turn this off. Okay, so it's a pretty simple process. Just gonna scoop it out, put it in. So yeah, you guys will see the tank in a couple weeks or a week or so, depending on when I get around to make another video. Um, finally got caught up on all the 3D printed orders. I'm adding some new mods right now. I'm doing some bed leveling, some uh, new PCB boards, filament sensors, all sorts of stuff. So the printers are up, but they are down at the same time. So glad I got caught up before making that move happen. And uh, just been working on the 300, removed a ton of stuff, super stressed out, killed the head of one of my, uh, uh, what is it? What the heck is that thing called? Torch, one of the heads on the torch died. What happened is all the shaving I did and all the, uh, buzzing all the pieces floating around parts of coral got into the mouth of the torch and it ended up uh killing it off so yeah we're not stopping this up all the way today i'm gonna have to order some more actually i already did it will be here when did i order that yesterday no day before yeah i uh had to get some glue too so yeah i put in an order a bunch of stuff can't even keep track that's why i got somebody helping me with uh inventory and all that stuff because Man, with everything going on, I'll forget. So yeah, we'll finish topping this off later, probably most of the day, Saturday. So it'll probably be here Tuesday or Wednesday. So we'll finish it then. Um, and I also ordered some of the uh, fine grease stuff too. So I uh, got to, because I've been using the other media in the secondary chamber, this uh, coarse stuff just to keep it topped off. And I got something to replace that as well. So yeah, anyway, uh, it's kind of full. It's good enough for now. It's a lot better than it was. It's not going to be clogged. And uh, what we do now is grab the shop back, clean out all this nonsense and then get it back in place. All right guys, well I'm back. Sorry I didn't show you the whole process. It was actually pretty tedious. I had to get in here and clean out the bottom, organize the cords, get them back. Of course, get that whole reactor back in there, which really wasn't too bad. I had to twist it and kind of just get around this pipe, but uh, it wasn't really that bad. Uh, anyway, uh, filling up right now, turned on the feed pump, slowly going to fill up, probably take probably 10 or uh, 15 minutes. Now the secondary chamber is emptying right now a little bit. Uh, you see that air gap there just because of course it's getting pushed through with the feed pump and uh, once all the air is out of the system i will turn on the co2 and then turn on the mixing pump and we'll go back to normal so from this point forward because there's a lot of new media there's not really a full chamber i have to keep an eye on the alkalinity and i'm going to use the trident for that of course testing every other day with the uh, hannah checker as usual and uh, just kind of monitor it from there now because of all the coral that's growing this is not the ideal time to be messing with the calcium reactor but of course when it rains, it pours, and if, you know, if you're dealing with something, there's always going to be something else coming up. But overall, this really wasn't too bad. Uh, definitely something that needed to be done. And I would recommend, if you do have a calcium reactor, do this once a year. Um, two years might be a little much, and it also depends on how much media you're using. I burn about, I don't know, right now, probably like 6 to 10 inches in that main chamber every single month. It's pretty ridiculous. But uh, that's 500 gallons now. That's not what I originally set this up for. It was only going to be for the 300, and then we added 200 more gallons worth of water. So... You know, it's 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 made for, but it's getting used up pretty quickly. But uh, yeah, so if you're using a lot of media, you might want to do the maintenance a little bit sooner, uh, two years. I'm not doing that again. Lesson learned. Again, this is my first uh, real calcium reactor, so lesson learned on that. Um, but uh, I mean, that's the whole part of life, learning lessons and try not to make the same mistakes again. But uh, anyway, that's about it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, yeah, not much editing. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you later. Peace.